Nervaya. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Dabi. Naim. Persons, thank you, Dr. Bansi Sabu and uh, Team Dak here for giving this opportunity, inviting a surgeon for a uh, lecture which is purely medical. So today I'll be talking about body composition analysis and type 2 diabetes. I don't know why I was assigned this lecture, maybe because I must have brought more machine than anybody else. So everybody knows about diabetes, I don't have to talk, but most of the time, whatever we monitor, usually we monitor HG1C, the weight, waist circumference, blood pressure, um, fasting glucose, or CGT. Um, but this is not enough. Ideally, we should monitor their muscle mass, their visceral fat, and their extracellular water ratio. So these are the areas which, if we monitor along with diabetes, I think we can do a great justice. As I said, we need to maintain our muscle mass so that body percentage fat can be reduced or minimized so that diabetes severity can go down. So if we talk about muscle mass and diabetes, there are publications which says there is every increase of 10% in uh, muscle mass results into reduce reduction of 11% of insulin resistance in these patients. And there is and another publication that relative muscle mass is inversely associated with uh, insulin resistance and uh, pre-diabetic pre patients and findings are from the third national health and nutrition uh, evaluation survey group. So a person, we can have two type of people, we can have healthy people with low muscle mass which lead, with, who might be having increased insulin resistance and they can develop diabetes and there is a healthy person with high muscle mass low insulin resistance may prevent diabetes. So our target should be maintaining a high muscle mass and reduction of insulin resistance. So if you look at the insulin receptors which are located in uh, plasma membrane, adipocytes, hepatocytes, skeletal muscles and organ cells and the glucose transport type 4 which is responsible for glucose transport is located in plasma membrane, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, adipose tissue insulated glucose transport which are available. So glucose is important fuel for contacting muscle. Whatever exercise we do, use, but the, the glucose will be mobilized by uh, GLUT4 receptor and then only the glucose will be utilized. So we need to, uh, and that is only possible when we do a good exercise. So the incre increased insulin receptors after exercise in person with insulin dependent type 2 diabetes, uh, lead to more uh, reduction in insulin resistance compared to the normal person who is not doing exercise. So body composition can be used by different ways. One is to screen, screen these patients to find out whether they are at risk of uh, diabetes, mainly people with low muscle mass. The skeletal muscle mass is the parameter which is given or which can be analyzed by our in-body uh, machine. And insulin resistance sensitivity related to low muscle mass which is everybody knows and the monitoring of these patients whether they are losing their muscle mass or they are increasing their muscle mass so whenever we monitor these patients by doing this body composition analysis there is muscle which is decreasing the SMI may go high and they develop sarcopenia and most of these patients are having more severe diabetes uh, then and if you look at this skeletal muscle mass or overall uh, uh, extracellular water and SMI. SMI can be calculated by um, weight of right arm, left arm, left limb, and, uh, right lower limb divided by height in meter square. So this machine calculates that and we get the report uh, from the machine. So cutoff for sarcopenia for Asians. There was a consensus meeting for Asian working group for sarcopenia and they uh, recommend using height adjusted skeletal muscle mass instead of weight adjusted uh, skeletal muscle mass and suggested the cutoff value of 7 kg per meter square in men and 5.4 kg per meter square in women using a DEXA scan but by using a BCA machine the cell's cutoff value is 7 kg per meter square in men and 5.7 kg per meter square in women and definitely by uh, SMI. So SMI is as I already said the cutoff value for SMI in male is 7 and for female it is 5.7. So, look at this diagram. There is 
in muscle mass which is high so there is less blood glucose in the blood vessels so overall glucose level will be low compared to the person with sarcopenia with low muscle mass having high glucose level and they have significantly bad diabetes compared to the normal people so there are patients with low leg muscle mass which lead to muscle weakness who are not able to do any physical activity they lose more muscle mass that lead to more insulin resistance and that will further uh, deteriorate the diabetes so this is very very important to monitor in these patients so this is a typical chart which we get here so you look at the skeletal muscle mass is quite low and if you look at the uh, right arm left arm trunk and legs the muscle is significantly low here so these patients are having more severe diabetes compared to the one here you can see the skeletal muscle mass is uh, significantly normal and if you look at them the uh, skeletal muscle mass of limbs are much higher so they have less severe diabetes compared to uh, the other the other another parameter which we usually evaluate by body component analysis machine is visceral fat and what is its correlation with diabetes is usually we are able to uh, monitor the complication of diabetes because this association between body fat and diabetes induces peripheral neuropathy in middle aged patients with type 2 diabetes and here you can just see if you look at the waist circumference fat mass this is a patient with uh, uh, diabetes uh, without diabetic neuropathy and this is a group with diabetic neuropathy and if you look at most of these are almost high in all of them and if you look at the uh, lean muscle mass which is comparatively near normal but visceral fat is very very high in the neuropathy group so overall if we conclude here the abdominal obesity was associated with uh, increased uh, diabetes uh, induced peripheral neuropathy insulin resistance might be mediated obesity uh, might be mediated obesity and diabetic neuropathy in middle-aged patients with type 2 diabetes so this table shows uh, waist circumference fat mass fat percentage visceral fat percent increase in a neuropathy group compared to the non-neuropathy group so this is a typical uh, of visceral fat mass so whenever it goes beyond 80 percent there is high risk of developing more severe diabetes compared to uh, the normal people so if you look at the high baseline visceral fat level were a signal so with increasing incidence of type 2 diabetes in adjusted models the incidence of type diabetes begins increasing at visceral fat of more than 80 centimeters per square in men and more than 60 in women the third component is extracellular water which is very very important the water accumulates in whole body including arm leg trunk and other parts of the body diabetes damages the blood vessels which lead to uh, permeation of these vessels leading to extravasation of the fluid to the extra cellular compartment leading to edema and fluid retention and human body is made up of about 50 to 70 percent of body water composed of intracellular and extracellular water the ratio is of intracellular water is much more which is 62 percent versus 32 38 percent in uh, extracellular water so this is the ratio in healthy people and many people suffering from diabetes complain about leg swelling and feet swelling who are having chronic swelling and poor blood flow in these legs leading to edema ulceration of ankle and foot therefore it can be monitored by doing this analysis of uh, extracellular water and we can always diagnose and treat these patients beforehand so look at uh, this is extracellular water ratio whenever it is more than uh, 0.390 it is called edema so here so this is all normal but if, when it is going more than this that means this person is having edema this is a ratio of intracellular and extracellular water using the extracellular water ratio for early screening of diabetic neuropathy which is one of the highest complications complications caused because of diabetes diabetes is slowly emerging one of the leading cause of chronic kidney disease when the kidney is damaged it cannot uh, uh, wash out the water and resulting into retention of the fluid 
So there is more uh, increased extracellular water uh, than the intracellular water. So the causes of intracellular water here are acute heart failure, ascites, CRF, or post-operative status, sometimes in peritonitis and other conditions. So and decreased intracellular water, which can be because of malnutrition, aging, cataxia, and even in sarcopenia. So these can be monitored. The insulin induced, induced edema in a child with newly diagnosed diabetes mellitus. Insulin causes salt and water retention. So elevated plasma insulin considered within the physiological range has a more marked anti natriuretic action. So insulin induced edema should be considered in the difference diagnosis in edema in children and adolescents with type 1 diabetes mellitus. Loop diuretics you know, are beneficial in these patients. Uh, This is a body water street, which we usually get. We can see the visceral fat here. We can see the BMI. We can have fat percentage and this is the uh, water ratio. So few case studies like this is a body fat with insulin resistance. This is a female who is on the premenstrual syndrome. Which ratio is 0 0.88. Weight is uh, 83.4 BMI is uh, 36.6 and skeletal muscle mass is 21.2. So overall, if you look at the fat percentage, body fat percentage is more than 53 percent, and this should be our target. So we want to increase the muscle mass and reduce fat percentage, then only we can avoid insulin resistance, and in future development of diabetes can be reduced. Similarly, their leg muscles are having different. Uh, weight in both the legs you can see the significant difference maybe because of edema or something this is another patient with uh, uh, poor diabetes control with sarcopenia type 2 diabetes in more than 20 years bitter diabetes insulin resistance with poor uh, insulin sensitivity c peptide is less which is significantly low we consider almost near type 1 and smi is 4.9 and minerals are also low and with low bmd so here you can see the muscle mass is 15.5 for any female which is very very low. The fat percentage though the weight is normal. If you look at the BMI, BMI is 21.1. BMI is normal but fat percentage is very high. Muscle loss, muscle mass is very low. And these patients are having bad diabetes compared to the other patient with good muscle mass. So in summary, we can use body composition. One is for screening the diabetic patient. We can diagnose the people with pre-diabetes by measuring their muscle mass. If their skeletal muscle mass is low, they have more high chances of insulin resistance. So we can always improve this and we can avoid uh, diabetes in this person. And height fat percentage, the person body fat, which as I already said, our visceral fat area, uh, if it is very high, we need to consider them as an obesity person and we should treat this to even reduce the chances of diabetes. For monitoring purpose, we can have muscle wasting uh, or mus uh, complication of diabetes. So we can have muscle wasting and in a due course of treatment in these patients. And the muscles are reducing, that means their SMI is going high. These patients are developing sarcopenia and we should be taking care of this unless and fail. Otherwise, they may go into more severe disease. Other complication is lower limb edema, which can be because of CRF and other conditions. So there is central excess of water ratio, which can be measured, and we can prevent dialysis by acting in these patients. So in monitoring, body composition is very, very important. And sometimes if you give a uh, copy of this uh, report to them and they try to uh, check every time the progress, in these patients, they can motivate to increase or change their body composition by doing different type of exercise and to reduce the complications of diabetes in these patients. With this, I complete my talk and thank you very much.